Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, I want to go through making a turn based system. So you can see here we have a whole bunch of enemies that are taking turns, and then once they are all done, it will be my turn to move my player, and then it will just cycle through and continue going basically in an infinite loop as there is no end to this game here. This is just to kind of show off the system itself. So this is kind of what we're going to be creating here. So let's close our finished product and let's dive into a semi empty project here. So we kind of have a normal setup and I'm going to assume that you know uh, a little bit of information about Game Maker Studio. We have a script file here and this just includes all of our different states. This is our numerator that we'll be using. So all of our items can have one of these states. They can either be idle, which is kind of their wait turn, or they can have a think and then thinking. And the reason we're doing this is because I'm giving the enemies a small break before they actually finally go into their run turn, which they just choose a random position. So right now, if we take a look, we don't really have anything else worth pointing out. So to make this system work, what I want to do is I want to make it flexible. I want to be able to add one player in here, and then I want to be able to add, let's say, three enemies in here, and I want them just to work right off the bat. So to do this, we're going to be using some parroting or inheriting to help work. So what we'll do is we will create a new object, and let's just call this obj under, and let's call this statable. I believe that's how you call it statable it's gonna be statable but anyway um what we're going to do in this specific object all we're going to do is open up the parent and we're going to drag both the enemy and the player into here so now what this means is when we are in a room if we look for the object statable it's going to find all four of these objects so the next thing we want to do is create a manager or i would say a controller that's going to control the different turns that these guys are going to have so once again let's create a new object we'll call this obj underscore turn manager and in here we're going to have a couple different steps the first step we're going to have is create and this is going to gather up all of the different items within the room so to do this, we're going to be using a couple of different lists. So I want to make sure that everything is randomized. So I'm going to have randomized at the top. And now I need a list and I will just call this turn list. And this is going to be a DS list. So we need to create it. And this list we're going to use throughout the game. So this is the one, this is going to be our main one. The next thing we need to do is find all of the objects in our room. So we could say VAR objects equals a ds list create because we're going to be using a list and now we're going to loop through each one of these objects within the room so to do this we can use a for statement so we could say for var i equals zero and then if i is less than the instance number and remember we have this special object here object statable so we'll say object underscore statable so if it's less than that, uh, if it's not, we want to increase i plus 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add, so ds list add to our objects list, and we're just going to add the instance find of whatever object statable that we found at the index of i. So all this is going to do is it's going to load up the room. It's going to see that we have these four different objects because they all are a child of statable and it's going to add them to that list. So the next thing we need to do is we need to kind of go through the list and shuffle it up to see who's going to be first. So to do this, all we have to do is we can kind of use a while statement. So we could say while the s list size of the objects is bigger than zero. So we know that we have at least one item in our list. We could say ds list shuffle and we're going to shuffle our objects. So now that we have randomized the order, even though we've collected them up here, now we're randomizing the order that they're in. All I want to do is add the first one into this turn list. So I could say ds list add turn list and let's add the first item from our objects and now we can remove the 
deleted item. So we'll say ds list delete. And we want to remove the objects at index zero. Now you may be wondering why are we doing this in a while statement? And I have a error here. Let's fix this. So we're doing this in a while statement because I want to loop over the objects and shuffle them and then one at a time add them into that turn list. So we're going to get a random order on which items are going to come up first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Now we don't want memory leaks because we are technically all done with this DS list here objects. So we want to make sure that we call DS list destroy and we destroy the objects list itself. Now what we're going to have to do is a little bit different because even though game maker loads up the room and it finds these objects, we don't know if this enemy or say this player is going to have their crate event ran first or second or third. So we're going to use a special event to make sure that all of the objects in our game here have ran their crate events. So we have all the variables that we need to have access to. So back in our turn manager, we're going to create an event and we want to go to other and then choose room start. So this is going to load after all of the objects have been created. We're going to load this specific event here and we're going to use another function called event underscore user and it, we pass in the number one. So what this is going to do is we can create different functions on this object turn manager and we can run them using event underscore user instead of having a script. So we can do add event and we go to other then we do user events and then whatever number we pick and we obviously pick number one, we'll want to add that in. And number one is just going to be the turn decider. And all we're going to do for this one is we need to grab our turn list. So we'll make sure that our DS list size turn list is bigger than zero. So this means that we have something in the list. Then what we want to do is grab the first instance equals turn list and we are going to grab the first whoops the first item out of that turn list and we're going to say the instance dot state equals turn state dot think so once again we're just making sure that our turn list has items in it then we are grabbing that first instance and we are setting the state to something else than waiting so in our case we're going to set it to think so let's actually add this turn manager into a room. I'm going to throw him up at the top and let's run it to see what's actually going to happen. I'm not sure if we're going to get any errors, but it shouldn't completely work here. So you can see that this guy took his turn and then nobody else gets a turn. And that's because we haven't coded it. So let's close this and let's go to the object enemy. So I've left a bunch of code in here. And I'll just kind of go through it um, quickly for you. So we want to make sure that all of our enemies, their state is set to idle at the start. And then the draw, uh, if the state is set to idle, we just draw that um, cursor going left and right there, the sync cursor. And then we are using an alarm here where you can see that if we are doing an idle state, we don't do anything. If we are in the think state, I want to set the alarm zero to one second. And then we change it to this state which is thinking, so we get that little weight there. In alarm uh, zero, all we do is change the state to run, and then finally in run, we just try and randomly move to a certain position. So what we need to do is we need a way to tell our turn manager that this guy is done his turn. So back in the turn manager, let's actually add a new event, and we'll go down to other, and we'll choose user events and let's choose user event zero for now. So this is going to be the function that's going to fire to change the person's turn and put the next person at the list. So what we can do is we can grab the first item from our list. So we can say VR object equals turn underscore list and grab the first item. And actually this is probably a good thing also to wrap. You know how we had this one wrapped in a little if statement, we want to make sure that we do have some objects in that list, so we'll wrap it there. Anywhere you think your game's going to crash or could possibly crash, always do a little bit of extra work so that you make sure that your game doesn't crash so that your users have the best uh, gaming experience they can get. All right, so we went off track there, but so we grabbed the first item in the list 
And then what I want to do is now delete that item. So I'll say DS list delete. And we want to delete from our turn list at the index zero. And now I'm going to add that item to the end. So we'll say DS list add. And we could say turn list. And let's add the item object to the end. And now all we have to do is call this event one, which will grab the first item and set the state to think. So to do that, all we have to do is say event underscore user, and we want to call that first one. So even though we've written this function, we're still not calling it from anywhere. If we go back to the enemy and we look at the step event, specifically, we're going to look at the run state. Down here at the bottom, once we have finished everything, maybe this would be a good option to actually call that specific one. So down here at the bottom, I'm just going to make sure that we are in the right case statement here. What we can do is we could say with object turn manager. And what this will actually do is it's going to look in our room and see if we have any of these objects here. Because we only have one, this is going to work perfectly. If you have more than one, you may want to do a little bit of instance find to make sure you find the right manager that you're looking for. But because we only have one in our room, this is going to work just fine. So with the term manager, all we have to do is say event underscore user and call the uh, event zero. Now I've already set up the player that way, but I will show you that. So in the player, once we come down, um, because we're not using an alarm or anything, if we get set or we're told to go out of idle, we just set the state to run. And then I wait for a valid input. And once the input has been done, we set the turn manager to the next turn and then we just set our state back to idle now some of this stuff could probably be moved out into this event user um, zero because in here we do have the object so we might as well set the state however i will leave it like that and it's just up to you to decide so if i hit f5 let's see if we have any errors here and okay so this guy's moving then that guy that guy and now it's up to our player to move so let's try and move to the right and then it will keep cycling through. So the nice thing about this system is the way that we just set it up is let's say we spawn a room that has you know this many different enemies and yeah the, you know what that's gonna take some while to go through but if we run our game it's already set up to do everything for us. So now we just have to wait our players turn before we can move but because the way that we coded it it's already done for us, which is super awesome and super nice. Then really it's just going to be up to you to code the different states that the enemy or the player can have. And that brings this video to an end. I hope you learned something and a huge shout out to the Patreon supporters such as Victor, Wayne, Paul, and Jean. Um, please like, subscribe, leave any comments. I'll get to them as quick as I can. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks everyone.